when you look at you know the, the the CDC and some of the combined testing data that we know, how much more do we understand this virus compared to two weeks ago? We're getting a much better picture based on the testing data that's being um, you know inc the increased numbers of testing and the testing data that's being shared. The challenge with the CDC combined testing data is it's two different types of tests. So it's an antibody test which doesn't talk about acute infection, and then it's the viral test, which tells you if you're sick right then. So um, the sooner we can disaggregate that testing, the better we'll be. But just seeing the testing data flow in is so important to um, all these phased reopenings. Are we closer to really finding in these studies a, a medication, something that works? I know we focused a lot on remdesivir, but how much more knowledgeable on we on that today that, you know, as opposed to a month ago. Yeah, so we are um, we're we're seeing a lot of the data come in from these early studies, um, the remdesivir trial, the ACT trial from the NIH just pushed their first uh, major paper out, um, which definitely showed improvements to recovery time um, and clinical status and mortality, which is great. Um, there's a lot of limitations of that study. It's the first one out of the gate for them. Um, and uh, I'll disclose I'm an investigator of that study. Um, but this, the study design is really good. And the, um, the placebo arm shows that uh, allows us to see a lot more about how the patients are recovering. We also saw some recent data uh, from the hydroxychloroquine uh, a major hydroxychloroquine registry study, which actually led to the WHO and some other places suspending the use of hydroxychloroquine um, because of some harms identified and potential safety concerns from those studies. That wasn't a placebo-controlled study, um, so we have a lot more to learn about hydroxychloroquine as well, but we're seeing good data coming out of really rigorous studies, which are improving our understanding of what therapies are going to work and what therapies aren't going to work and may even cause harm. Lauren, do we have a good handle of how many people have had COVID so far in the U.S., but also worldwide? Do we need to test more just to, to understand the hot spots, how this thing is moving around? Yeah, I mean, I think we could always test more. It's always good when you start to see the, um, the positivity rate in the testing that you're doing going down, which we are seeing. Um, the WHO would like to see, you know, roughly 5% positive of all the cases, of all the tests that you're being done or less. Uh, less is always better, but right now we're we're between. I mean, we're we're all over the map in form in so far as that rate. So uh, I think we have a ways to go on testing, but there are a lot of strategic efforts that are happening, which is really great. Um, the more we can test, the better. Um, the more we can use those other uh, public health measures like social isolation while we're, uh, or so, sorry, social distancing while we're increasing our testing capacity. Um, and making sure that the testing is happening in the right spot, so accessing those rural populations, um, accessing new hot spots, making sure the testing data is separate based on the type of test, um, all the better. Well, when do we know how long antibodies are here for in people that develop them and test positive to the antibodies test? Yeah, it's going to be a ways to go on that. I think we'll, we'll have to see do longitudinal studies to really understand how people's antibodies develop. Um, some of the early data that's coming out does show that, that, that a lot of people have antibodies, which is good. Uh, what we have to understand is if it's those neutralizing antibodies. And um, the antibody tests are helping, but we're still seeing a lot of false positives um, and false negatives in those antibodies, so the, in those antibody tests. So the tests have to get better in order to to really uh, do those rigorous studies. And um, I, I think people are working on that. I think that there's a lot of science behind the idea of understanding who um, makes neutralizing antibodies and who develops immunity um, and what that picture of immunity looks like, how long it lasts. But um, there's a lot of work left to be done.